Welcome to Braunton Countryside Centre, the starting point to discover Braunton Coast and Countryside. At the heart of the North Devon biosphere, an area of outstanding natural beauty, it lies in the most biodiverse parish in England, with many unique habitats, rare flora and wildlife. The centre is an important environmental hub, providing visitors with information and interpretation about the area, as well as supporting local conservation organisations to raise awareness of their activities. As part of the Biocultural Heritage Tourism Project, we have been helping visitors make the most of our stunning location. From the centre you can explore the rich history, culture and natural heritage of the village by taking one of our self-guided walks or cycle routes using the navigation app Komoot, which can be downloaded to your smartphone. This includes tours which explore the military history of Braunton, to cycle routes such as our local producers tour along the Tarka Trail and Braunton Marshes. Throughout the seasons there is much to see and do. In winter we join wildlife guide Martin Bat for a birding and photography experience. Well, we're now at Horsey Island, which is a brand new Devon Wildlife Trust Nature Reserve. It used to be um, grassland, but now it floods every high tide. We are at a particularly high tide today, the tide's going out. So it's an ideal time to come looking for some of the wading birds. And we've just been photographing a, uh, a little egret, which has become very common here. But you could also see things like shell duck and as the tide goes out, some waders. So we're now on the Fremington Pill, which is a tidal creek that flows into the Tor estuary and it's a great place for seeing birds quite close up. They seem to be quite habituated to humans and uh, we can see teal, a, a little egret and over there we've just spotted a, um, a glossy ibis which is really a very rare bird for the UK but this one has been here, it's the same one, it's been here for at least three winters. Um, should be in Spain somewhere, but it's uh, or France, spending its winters here. Winter is also a great time to take part in our Harvest Mouse training sessions with the Devon Mammal Group. Visitors learn all about these shy creatures and how to spot their nests, records of which provide important data for the Harvest Mouse project. The man-made ponds of Braunton Burrows provide ideal habitat for amphibians and freshwater invertebrates. Our pond dipping and nighttime conservation experience, led by ecologist John Breeds, includes spotting some rare creatures such as the great crested newt. This is the pond where we've found all three species of the English newts, the native newts. The top one on this chart is the great crested or warty newt but it's protected highly protected and you need a license to disturb it so the other newt which we'll find today probably is the smooth or common newt and you can see it's got a spotted belly in the male quite bright orange and also spots on the body and a, a bit of a crest on it the commonest newt overall is the palmate newt and we tell that one by the filament on the end of the tail with the male and it's got webbed hind feet. But when something's down in the weeds and you can't see it properly, it can be difficult. The females are sometimes lighter coloured than this and the difference between the two is that the palmate newt doesn't have any spots under the throat but you've got to catch them to see the throat. So it's not always easy to tell the females apart. Nighttime on the burrows is a unique experience 
where you can observe the nocturnal activities of the great crested newt. And now we join Adam Reeve from the Ramblers Pantry for one of our springtime wild food events as he shows us how to forage sustainably. Um, so here with the wild garlic, just thinking about different uses. Um, it can be used um, just purely as a really good, strong flavoured salad leaf. Um, it could be used to fla fa flavour breads, um, pastas, um, and also for uses in things like uh, wild pestos. Um, Here's another good example too about just being mindful when you are um, foraging in um, these wild spaces. It can be quite tempting just to be, um, be quick and take handfuls of plants and just rip them all out, pop them in the basket and carry on. But uh, nestled amongst these different plants is you have other ones which are again toxic. So you have dog's mercury here which if you look from the top down you can see almost like a star um, shaped leaf arrangement with these small um, flowers on top and these uh, long flower spikes and a very distinctive um, stem. So it has these two ridges along the stem. So if you just twiddle it between your finger and thumb, you can feel those ridges, which makes a quite clear um, identification feature. So again, if you are just grabbing all this garlic, you could easily just have a, um, one or two of these leaves or um, other toxic leaves that go in the basket. So it's really being really mindful to be slow and steady and just making sure that you're gathering exactly what you're after. Okay, so we have another flower here that can be used, but not just a spring flower. Um, this flowers out uh, all year round. Uh, there is a saying that when the gorse is in flower that it's time for kissing. And again, so it gives you an idea of its year long availability so far as it's good all year. Um, so this flower can be used uh, again in salads. Um, it's quite versatile in that way, but it's also often used in uh, cordial making as well as in use for uh, teas and uh, wine making. <laughs> so this flower has uh, two flavors um, dependent on the weather. If it's a bright sunny day, you'll get that sort of scent of coconut on the air and it has a really strong scent and flavour of coconut. So it can be used um, for that flavour in that regard. But if it's a, an overcast day, then it'll almost be a, a lot more of a duller flavour and you'll get almost like a, a pea flavour from it. So um, again, this one is the ones where it's accessible all year round, but the flavour can be dependent on the weather. As summer approaches, local ecologist and botanist Mary Breeds leads our weekly evening wildlife walks across the Braunton Burrows. The Burrows Nature Reserve lies at the heart of the North Devon biosphere. Its sand dunes and slacks boast a unique, rich diversity of plant and animal life, with 470 species of flowering plants, including 11 species of orchid alone. It is also home to a wide range of fauna, an abundance of insects, that includes 33 species of butterfly, many nesting birds, and five of the six reptile species found in the UK. In the height of summer, visitors can join our activities with the Bumblebee Conservation Trust. This includes learning how to collect and identify bumblebees. Braunton is an important stronghold for the very rare brown banded Carder bee. As the summer nights shorten, we take visitors on bat walks, where you may be lucky enough to spot the greater horseshoe bats, an endangered species. I can. More music almost sounds like oyster, distant oyster catchers on the seashore almost. Yeah, yeah. I'll turn mine down. Thank you, I can. It's like, I'm amazing. I'll turn mine down. Our autumn activities include an apple and cider making day, an important tradition in Braunton. You can also join in a fungal foray at one of our beautiful woodland nature reserves. As the festive season arrives, we celebrate with a winter market and crafting events. To find out more about our activities, visit our interactive website, follow us on social media, or if you can't visit us in person, then join us at one of our future online events. <laughs>